Hello, this is the Hacker Triple Seven, and today I'll be showing you guys how to uh, update the motherboard that I have, which is the A6 P9 X79 Pro. Um, if you don't have this motherboard, this tutorial is kind of useless for you. Although a lot of Asus motherboards are kind of the same um, for updating the BIOS, but unless you have this Pro motherboard or a motherboard along the same line, I would not suggest um, following this. But for, the, for those of you that do have this motherboard and are looking to update the BIOS, this is a good idea because a lot of them um, improve performance wise. Um, they, like I know the new update for the BIOS supports um, Windows 8 capabilities. So um, I'll have a link in the description below to this website right here, which is their official website. From here, you can just go ahead and select the OS. And go ahead to Windows 7 64 bit or 32 bit, but I'll be using 64 bit obviously. Click that. And the only requirements to this, guys, are the files that you get right here and a FAT32 um, flash drive. Now, 99% of flash drives you get are FAT32. To check, just go ahead and click on it once and it'll say File System FAT32. If it's not, you can go ahead and click Format and change the file system to FAT32 and hit format which will erase everything by the way so once we're here guys go to the BIOS now it says if your BIOS is 12.3 or 12.03 or older go to the other one now I have not updated this bio this motherboard yet I actually had to switch them out because mine was a faulty one uh, the uh, video card slot was a little messed up so I had to uh, replace it so I haven't updated this one yet so that's why I decided to do a tutorial on the updating process. So since it is 1203, which is the default one it comes with, when you go into BIOS Utilities, which is the um, converter. Now basically, the reason this thing is here is because um, they changed the way the motherboard works. So for, to make it compatible with Windows 8, they changed the structure from a .rom file to .cap file. So basically, our my current one is running on the .rom, but we need to switch to dot cap. So this utility will automatically change it to dot cap and the latest version. So we won't have to do this twice. So go ahead guys and just download the uh, link right here. Or, or this doesn't matter any of them really. Actually I'm just gonna do this. Click global, it'll do that, you can get that right there. Now, here's another link that I'll have in the description below. Um, this is the way they suggest doing it, which is through their white USB that comes on the back of the, the computer. Um, I'm not going to be doing this today. I find it much easier to go through BIOS and just use the utility built into it. Um, why is this taking forever? So, um, I can see right here. I'm not going to be using that. I think it's kind of stupid, to be honest, but it's good for backup, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know, but anyway, so um, again, this is the same th thing for all these motherboards right here. So what we'll do now is we'll just put this on the side. Go to a downloaded file, which is this right here, and extract it. Comes with a uh, little tutorial, I guess you could say. Now here is um, what we're going to have to do. So, we're going to have to change the name of this file. I'm not sure why they don't change it for you, but they don't. So, go to the whatever motherboard you have, which I have this one right here. So, I will be naming it to this. Now, do not name it .cap. It comes in a .rom file. That is for the updated ones. So, make sure it says .cap behind it. So, go ahead and type in what it says, which is p... 9 x 79 pro and leave it dot rom now some of you guys may not, may not see that dot rom um go ahead choose hit alt on your keyboard in this comment right here go to tools go to folder options go to view and where it says um high extensions of known file types It'll be clicked, unclick it, and then hit OK. 
now it will give you the name the file extensions make sure it says px p9 x79 pro.rom all right now if you have a have a motherboard that's updated past 1203 you will have to name dot cap like I said right now ours is dot rom the new ones are dot cap so now that you have renamed it to the proper just drop it straight onto your um, compatible flash drive just drop it right into the root of it and there we go so now you can see it's right there and now that we have it all compatible and ready to go um, again if you have any questions feel free to comment before you do anything because if you do mess it up it is fixable but you might have a little more trouble anyway once it's on the root and you have everything ready to go um, unplug the flash drive and or leave it plugged in sorry just start your computer and uh, we'll fold in the uh, continue with the video all right so uh, once we're on the outside of our computer make sure your monitor is turned on on and make sure your mouse is turned on besides that just have your flash drive that you used before plugged into your uh, computer and any USB port like I mentioned earlier there is a white USB somewhere back here again I have about a trillion wires coming out of the back of my computer or USB sorry so I don't really go back there too much well, once you have uh, plugged your flash drive in and have already just go ahead and power on the PC if you want a full review of my uh, computer, computer, you can go ahead and description below and click on the link. And when it gets to the uh, boot screen, like this right here, just press the delete button on your keyboard. I like to spam it a lot because uh, I tend, st I see if you press it once, sometimes it doesn't register. So but press it a bunch of times and normally you'll, uh, get your result. Alright, so now we're in our uh, BIOS utility here. Now take note of everything uh, that you set in here because when you do uh, update it, it will reset everything. So use your mouse, go to the adva exit advanced options here and go to advanced mode. This is the uh, advanced area. Go ahead and go to the tool section and click the easy flash to utility. This will bring this up right here. Using your mouse, just go ahead and click the flash drive, which has a name most of the time. Click it there. And then go ahead and click the ROM file. So you guys can see at the bottom there, it has the file ROM. Click it and click it. Do you want to read the file? Click OK. And it says, do you really want to update the BIOS? You can see at the bottom, it says the model, the version, and the date. All right, so now you can go ahead and click the OK button. And by clicking OK, at the bottom there you should see the processing and this will uh, process basically. Like I said earlier in the video, um, some of these updates are pretty good. Um, this one right here gets uh, more support for the Windows 8 OS. Along with some others, they will support a uh, just some updates. I don't suggest updating this every single time there's a new update unless you're uh, unpleased with performance. Otherwise, you guys can just do it like once a year or if you're doing a uh, fresh install. But otherwise, the BIOS is not one of the things that people are always on their mind updating. Um, I just thought this would be a good idea to uh, do a tutorial on. Alright, so now it's done, it will say update successful and you press the OK button, it will restart. Now, the uh, first time you do boot your computer on, it will take a little longer, um, as it's still getting used to and optimizing your firmware. This time you turn it on, it will actually not even boot into Windows, it will boot into its uh, little installation process. So, our brain is loading, please wait. Any second now, it should uh, come up with our. And there we go. So it finally, after it shows that.
Alright, so now it says that it's updating the BIOS and the firmware. So it will ha what happens is it will update the BIOS and then update the firmware. The BIOS takes much longer to upload or to update than the firmware, and you guys see it goes about 2% per second. So it takes less than a minute when you do this. Make sure you don't turn off your computer during this process, you will screw it up. Um, luckily, you can restore it using the uh, USB flashback, but um, it's a much better idea not to do that. So you can see now we're updating the firmware, and once it's done this part, it will actually restart. Now you guys will see once I restart, I do get a uh, error. Now on third, you guys won't get you won't get this problem, and the reason I'm mentioning it now is so I have time to explain it. Um, in my computer, I have the Noctua DH14, which is a two big big fans. Well, for a CPU cooler, it's a big fan. And it's actually connected to a heat sink or maybe two, two heat sinks, I think. Well, I had a problem where it would tell me that it's running too slow. The fan's not running fast enough. Well, because my knock tools are so large, um, the fan wise, they actually can run slower than the normal computer's CPU limit, and it will still actually even do a better job. And you guys can see the, the air right here. It says CPU fan error, so I press F1 to set up. And you guys can see right there, it's not running fast enough. Um, it actually will go that fast if it has to, but at boot, it's not doing that fast. So all I do to do this, I go to the um, monitor and change that. Now right now, what I'm doing, if you're, if you're, if you're wondering, is I'm actually overclocking my RAM. Now technically, it's overclocking, but it's not really overclocking because of my setup. It's actually the recommended speed. So you guys can see right here, I just lower the uh, RPM to 300, which is like what I like to do. A little more on the X or the X uh, MP though. Basically, with my setup, the RAM is set to go at 1200 megahertz, I think. And what I'm doing is I'm basically setting it to go a little faster, so it goes to 1600. And actually, that's the recommended thing for my chipset and uh, motherboard and uh, CPU. So it's not really overclocking, but it is. Uh, just having the RAM run faster. So after reboots are here guys, it will go a little, a little longer than reboot, it kind of reboots twice almost. Now, like I said earlier, when you do update your BIOS, it's going to reset everything that has to do with the BIOS. So like I said, the, the CPU fan limit, the XMP uh, settings. Also, if you are overclocked, it will reset, restart the overclock back to default, which for my system is 3.2 gigahertz. So you will have to re-overclock if you uh, do this tutorial. Now that's about it guys for this video. Um, feel free to uh, tweet me or Facebook me if you have any qu problems or questions. Or you can leave a comment in the description below. Or below. And besides that guys, have a great day. It's the Hacker 7 and I'm signing off.